So we have Dr. Dadamash with On Chain Records here, and I want to talk to him about what he's doing in the community and what that looks like. So, Dr. Dadamash, will you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your project? Hey, yeah, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm Dr. Dadamash. I'm a music producer and a record producer. Um, been in the metaverse space and just crypto space um, past few years, and um, really just kind of tried to use the technology to um, just kind of push the boundaries of, of music and kind of started like with some sample packs and that kind of stuff um, as NFTs. Um, and then now I produce um, physical records uh, that are linked to the Ethereum blockchain via NFC chips. Um, and so they, they all have that NFT component um, and then the record itself actually has an Ethereum address as well. Oh, that's, oh, that's really, really cool. cool. Um, sorry, Dr. Doge came in. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. So, so what, what kind of, I know you had a big thing with God cloud recently. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Cloud machine. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, all good. Um, yeah, so they, uh, yeah, they just dropped their NFT collection. Um, it's Dave Van Patten. He designed all of the work, so like he actually hand illustrated uh, every piece, um, and then, um, so it's like a non-generative collection because there are a lot of the same backgrounds and all those that you'd see in the PFP, you know, different, like the same characters and traits and all of that. But he actually matched up. Uh, the characters that like fit with certain backgrounds and all of that. So um, yeah, a lot of work went into that. And then um, we actually met their team out in New York during NFT NYC. Um, and it, it happened to be uh, their event that night. And then earlier that day, we just dropped our first on-chain record release. Um, and so it was just, you know, we had a record in hand, just kind of showed them. And then, uh, yeah, we've been in contact ever since. Um, and so they asked us to uh, make some physical records for the drop. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're making 100 uh, records, uh, picture disc records, with the illustrations that match to the NFTs. And so um, starting on Friday of this week, um, the claim window will be open where if you have that NFT, you'll be able to see if you can claim a record. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of our current project right now, our current focus. I'm seeing Sorry. that art um, from uh, Dave Van Patten. Is that street art that is up there, like on his on his banner? That's pretty wicked. Um, yeah, where which banner uh, on the OpenSea? Uh, uh, no, on on his personal banner on his uh, on his Twitter handle. I mean, it looks like just like a side of a building almost right here because you can see it on the street art right there. But I mean. Just I love the look of it. I love uh, what it, it entails. Um, can you talk a little bit more about like the the process of actually like putting it on wax, as they say back in the day? Um, <laughs> you know, is that something that you've you uh, something that you've um, done in your past? Like, is that your uh, good line of work that you've been in? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no. So it's it's kind of um, yeah, an interesting story, I guess. Um, so we started doing this back in. I think I got the equipment back in March, maybe April of this year. Um, and it's, we, there are all the records are lathe cut. And so the, the machine that we use rather than like uh, lacquer pressing where, you know, you're making the master and then you're, you're pressing all the vinyl. Um, we use a record lathe, which is vintage equipment from like the 1940s. And uh, it's essentially like a heavy duty turntable, um, except the needle is cutting the grooves rather than playing the music. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so we did that for several reasons. Um, one is, you know, just money. I, I can't buy a <laughs> record pressing plant. Um, but then also, just right now, in the current state of the vinyl world, um, the turnaround times are just insane. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it used to be you could get a record pressed in two to three months, or three to four months, I guess. Um, now it's over a year turnaround time, and that's, that's worldwide, too. That's just everywhere. Um, and so along with that too, you know, the minimum 
uh, order quantities used to be like, you know, a hundred records, which you didn't have to be on a label to get that, you know, maybe it would cost like $1,500. And if you were in a band, you know, you could pitch in and you could sell those a uh, hundred records. But now that the demand is so high and the turnaround times are so long, uh, most places, the minimum order quantity is like three to 400, which now that kind of eliminates anyone that's like not on a label because unless you have a large following, uh, you're yeah. probably not going to sell 300 records. Um, so these are like pretty much like true, even one of ones. Cause like when they're made, they're not like cookie cutter pressed. These are like almost like like scribed or etched, I guess you would yep. say. I mean, is that is that the terminology? I, that's probably not the terminology, but that's how <laughs> I envision it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, so yeah, they're all. It's kind of like the handmade approach, where um, kind of setting it up. The all, all the records are cut in real time. Um, right. So you know, if if the track is three minutes long for a seven inch, it's going to take three minutes to cut it. Um, it's kind of cool too because going with this process um we can kind of like customize the records and experiment a bit more um so like one one thing that i like to do is um it's called a locked groove and so when i <clears throat> cut off the 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 needle that's that's cutting the record um when i turn that off i can make it so it loops and the the last groove loops back into itself and so uh like they did it they, it's been done before like on Sgt. peppers and you know a ton of other albums but like um essentially it's never ending and so you physically have to go and take the needle off. Yo. yeah and That's awesome. yeah yeah so i've been experimenting with that and doing like different loops and stuff and i've been trying to like time like specific loops like uh i don't know just on different songs and kind of making like looped records as well you know like dj tools and that kind of stuff um yeah it, it's been a blast do you do anything with like the color of the records because i i've seen that before where they're i don't know the way they make them colored with the different stuff. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so um so i don't like uh make like the i don't cut the plastic or anything so i buy like blanks of just here's a, a blank sheet of plastic and then i can uh cut the the grooves into that and so it depends on our plastic supplier, what they have in stock, but usually we we always have access to black and clear, uh, usually white, um, and then I, I currently have some gray in stock too. But the cool thing too is like, since I'm working with a plastic supplier, um, and you know I can just ask them to cut it like however I want, and so uh, we do like some square records too, and that's actually easier for them to cut rather than a circle anyway. Um, <laughs> So, do, you lose, do you lose playing time on a square record? So, yeah, we only do seven inches on the square, um, but it's the same play time as, uh, as the circle uh, for the seven inch. Right. But we I can't do the... Uh, square record. That's awesome. What was that? I've never seen a square record. That's awesome. Yeah, and actually I like doing that for the, like, the cloud machine for the picture discs. Those are circles, but... Um, I like doing picture discs square records because then you can like put it up on your wall and it's more of like an art piece, you know? You know what I like about this? Like, like you said, you mentioned this too, Novo. It's, it's not like it's, it's done complete, like in a factory somewhere, there's actually someone carving this out. Right. And it's got that almost like it's a, it's not necessarily like a lost art form, but you know, there's not, I'm assuming too many people that do that because of the time to wait that, that just adds like even more just like awesomeness to it. Because, like, each piece is wild. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. I yeah I hope. You you even hear of now, like, people finding mixtapes from, like, yep. the 90s and 2000s. And, they're, like, they'll pay, like, premium money if it was, like, a certain era and, like, yep. a certain day and a time. Like, top 100 mix of whatever. Like, people will pay. I'm not saying top dollar. But, I mean, if people are fi paying 5 10 bucks for something that you maybe paid – and cent or maybe a dollar for and then you recorded it when you're in high school junior high or whatever and you have it now like people are paying for it and to have vinyls i see it i, I go to the flea market every sunday just because i love looking for comic books and toys and diamonds in the rough and and i see it i see the vinyls and the people looking in there and there's like people like i get out there early i get out there when it opens at six o'clock there's people that will run 
and like try to get places. And one of the places they do is they go to the the same record people, uh, the same the, the people that are slanging the vinyl. They'll go out and they'll find them from estate sales and from other collection groups, and they'll bring them there. And you know what? People make, I've seen it. I've seen it for years. People make a living off of that stuff. And now the customizable stuff, the one of ones, like like uh, like you're saying here, I, I, it's a, it's a wonderful idea because. It, it does come to supply and demand where you can't just cookie cutter press it now because you need to have a like I'm gonna, I was about to say a minting size, a pressing size of a certain amount for that catalog. But this is a one of one service um, that is like hand scribed and then also adding art on top of it. I want to talk a little bit about the on chain records presents the Halloween spooktacular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we also have our Metaverse site as well. And so we have a parcel in uh, Voxels. And there we, we use it as um, uh, a music venue. But then we also have the interactive uh, virtual record store. Um, and so we, the downstairs level is the record store. And um, so we actually have it set up where you, know, you can actually dig through the crates. Uh, currently, it's full of classic albums. But the idea is... As our catalog grows, we'll kind of swap those out for, for our albums, and then you'll be able to click on each one, and then it will link you out to, the, to buy the physical record. Um, so so I'll, I'll give you my restream key, and you, we can restream next time in your guys' headquarters in Crypto Voxels, and we can do that. It's almost the exact same thing that we're doing right now. You can just uh, educate others, and we can stream it in there. If you want to do this exact same thing again, let me know. Yeah, definitely. I'd love that. So if somebody um, is a... Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, you go. Is a musician or artist or any of that, how would they um, get in contact with you or if they wanted to collaborate with you, what's that look like? Yeah, so our primary um, like forms of contact are Twitter and Discord. Um, and so, yeah, really at this point in time, we're working with like directly with the artists and, you know, like scheduling calls and like really get, kind of going into the details of what exactly do you want out of a digi-physical album? Because, um, I mean, it, it's just brand new where like there, there are no expectations really until we kind of get on that call. And then, so we kind of need that time to explain like exactly what, what we can offer, uh, like what our limitations are, but then also, um, really kind of having that conversation with like, what do they want out of this? Because that also just helps us um, to grow as well. And then um, like, we never did any of the, uh, the, the round picture discs before cloud machine. And so, um, you know, I, I was kind of talking about the square ones and then um, yeah, you know, they preferred the round. And so, you know, we went ahead with that and like, so each each new order, it just kind of allows for um, us to kind of like push in different directions, um, which is also something that I really wanted to do with the project because, you know, first I, I just wanted to make records and for my own music and for my friends' music and you know whoever wanted it, um, but also I see this as like, you know, we have the tools and resources to experiment in this space with the the digi physical and so. Um, I definitely want that to be open. And like you guys were saying before, it could even be a one of one. And so if someone comes into our discord and says like, Hey, this would just be a really cool idea. Um, like, I don't know if it will work out, but Hey, let's just experiment and try it. Um, I'm like 100% down with that. And so That's sick, man. Yeah. That yeah, is, just... I think that is a underrated, uh, thing. The only one of one, audio recording that i know of is uh the secret wu-tang clan album that oh, martin yeah, the CD, yeah. bought oh Bro. yeah yeah i would highly encourage anybody that especially if you're from a like if you're like the zoomer generation or you've never done any record collecting i think that's really something that uh the younger kids are missing out on is everything is curated and spoon fed to you on Spotify and you're just picking your playlist from like a bigger playlist. And, you know, up until before streaming, we had to go to record stores and search for stuff. And then your friends would come over to your house and you would have 
stuff that other people didn't have and then you know you're excited to go visit your friend so you could hear that song that only he had a copy of and i think we've lost touch with that yeah i i agree with that i and like i don't even know a lot of popular music today because it's like they're almost all one and done like <clears throat> i know songs and cds from back of the day because like you had to listen to that thing straight through that was your entertainment <laughs> it wasn't like oh blah like ADD, what's next? What's getting thrown down your throat on what the streaming platform you're paying for, you know? And if you were, is this if you were, if you were dropping $15 on an album for one song, you're like, do I want to be riding around listening to this one song for the next month? You know, you wanted like something a yeah. little more high quality, but I could imagine, I think the music industry is going to eventually come to, to NFTs and we are going to see something where like you know they won't have to sell a million records where they're only getting like pennies and royalties they could sell a thousand records and make more money and you might get people just, like looking for I just bought I just bought a Snoop Dogg and uh Method Man NFT on Flow blockchain earlier today they released the song it's their new song together and they released it straight through the flow blockchain on it as an NFT. 20 bucks a pop. They sold 10,644 copies. Yeah, quick. That's how quick it goes. Yep. Damn. Uh, anything else? I mean, that was uh, interesting stuff. Um, you know, definitely check out On Chain Records. And that's uh, at On Chain Records with an S on, uh, on Twitter. And then it's... Uh, and it's also they are also Discord as well. But uh, I don't want to cut you short. But all this is kind of resetting the room a little bit. Um, but yeah, anything anything more you want to add or talk about? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I um, I guess just adding on to some of those final comments, like a, a large part of this too is kind of that interactive experience where you know all, all the streaming today and a lot of music is just background music and it's not like truly appreciated. Um, and so that's also kind of what we're trying to do where it's, okay, you have the record, you put it on, but then you also get out your smartphone and then scan the NFC chip that's inside of it. And then you're kind of interacting digitally as you're listening to it. And so it kind of ties back to, like you were saying, you know, you, you buy an album from the, from the record store, you put it on, you listen to it with your friends and like, maybe you're like looking, like taking a close look at like the album artwork and like the liner notes and, and all of that. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of trying to bring back like that, um, like appreciation for the, for the art itself. I love that because I remember when I used to get CDs and look at the booklet that came in it, you know what I mean? And so this is kind of really bringing it in into the new, the new age. I really appreciate you coming on the show and teaching us about this. I've learned a lot tonight. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Definitely.